In this video, we will demonstrate how you can implement iterative learning control for trajectory control of a quadrotor in Simulink. For control design, we will use the iterative learning control block introduced in the 24B release, which is available with Simulink control design. Iterative learning control, or ILC, is a control technique that is best suited for systems that perform repetitive tasks, starting from the same initial conditions each time. Examples of such systems include industrial robots in automated manufacturing and autonomous vehicles following specific trajectories. If you're new to this topic, you can watch this tech talk first to learn how ILC works and the algorithm behind it. Here we will just give a quick overview before we implement an iterative learning controller in Simulink. Let's use a simple example to illustrate how ILC works. Consider a system that needs to perform a task repetitively, where it must accurately follow a reference trajectory and then return to the home position at the end of each cycle. For such repetitive tasks, starting from the same initial condition each time, ILC is well suited and can often provide better trajectory tracking than what a PID controller can achieve alone. In these scenarios, ILC is often used alongside a baseline controller like a PID to improve system performance by learning from previous iterations. More specifically, during each iteration, ILC measures the error between the reference and actual trajectories and computes the sequence of control actions to use in the next iteration. This sequence is then applied in the next iteration, which results in the response seen here. As this process repeats, the system converges iteratively, minimizing the error, resulting in improved trajectory tracking. On the last plot, we can also show the control effort by the baseline PID controller. We see that as ILC learns from past errors and its contribution to control grows, the PID control effort decreases with each iteration. This is the control law used to compute the control actions based on the error from previous iteration. Here, L represents a learning function that determines how well ILC learns between iterations, impacting convergence speed and robustness. The learning function can be designed in different configurations, which are model-free and model-based, both of which are supported in the ILC block, as we will see later in the video. The model-free ILC does not rely on a model of the system and is a suitable choice when you lack a model of your system. The model-based implementation, on the other hand, utilizes a system model to inform the learning process, potentially leading to better performance by leveraging system knowledge. Finally, Q is a low-pass filter used to eliminate high-frequency noise and reduce control chatter. Before we move on to the quadcopter example, one last thing we'll mention here is that ILC operates in two modes, control and reset. During the control mode, ILC measures the error and computes the next sequence of control actions. It also outputs the control actions generated from the previous iteration. What we consider as one iteration is the duration of the control mode. During the reset mode, ILC is idle and the system is brought back to home position by the nominal PID controller. After reviewing the ILC basics, we will continue with the Squawcopter example for ILC implementation. As we'll explore later, PID controllers designed using a linearized model of the inherently nonlinear quadrotor system might lead to unsatisfactory tracking performance in the presence of disturbances. In this case, ILC is a good choice to improve the tracking performance over repeated iterations, and that's why we're using ILC in this example. We will follow this workflow to show you ILC design, evaluate the performance of the design controller via closed-loop simulations, and finally generate code for deployment. Before we start with ILC design, we'll first examine the different components of this model. This example uses the six degrees of freedom block to model the translational and rotational dynamics of the quadcopter. You can explore the governing equations and entire example from the link provided below this video. 
The picture here shows a diagram of the two-loop cascaded control system implemented in this example to make the quad rotor follow a circular trajectory while maintaining a constant altitude of 1 meter. The circular trajectory is generated by the subsystem. The other loop is responsible for controlling the vehicle's position in the X, Y, and Z frame. And the inner loop handles the attitude control to maintain the roll, pitch, and yaw at the reference angles commanded by the outer loop. Let's take a closer look at both outer and inner loops starting with the former. In this example, we use simplified dynamics for the quadcopter and assume that the roll and pitch angles are small, allowing us to decouple position control in X and Y directions. This enables to have three independent control loops. For control in X and Y directions, we use two separate iterative learning controllers, each paired with a baseline PID controller. For height control at 1 meter, we use a standalone PID controller. The position tracking errors to the controllers are computed by the subsystem. Note that in addition to the position error, we also input velocity error to ILCs. Incorporating velocity feedback into ILC helps us achieve more accurate position tracking by maintaining the quadcopter at low speeds, minimizing overshoot and oscillations. The control in X direction is handled by a baseline PID controller augmented with an iterative learning controller, whereas a separate PID controller is used to bring the quadcopter to the home position upon completing the circular trajectory. Both the baseline and return to home PID controllers are previously tuned, with the latter tuned more aggressively to bring the quadcopter back to the home position as quickly as possible. Similarly, we tested with different ILC parameters and ran multiple simulations to find the set of ILC values that led to a satisfactory system response for trajectory tracking. Here we'll show you how to specify the predetermined values in the ILC block. The ILC block takes two inputs, the error and ILC mode, which is generated by the subsystem. In the ILC block dialog, we start by setting the values for the controller's sample time and the iteration duration. Recall that this is the duration during which ILC operates in control mode. Next, we will specify the ILC algorithm, choosing between model-free and model-based approaches. Here, we'll use the model-based ILC, which requires the state space model of the system. We use a linearized model of the quadcopter modeled as a double integrator, where the states and outputs are defined as the position and velocity of the quadcopter. The ILC method, along with the ILC gain, determines how the learning function will be computed, as shown in these equations. You can experiment with both options to see which one works better for your system. Here we will use the inverse model base. Lastly, we specify the ILC gain to be 0.3 and enable the low pass filter, setting its parameter to 2. The Y control has the same exact structure as the X control. So all we need to do is set up the ILC parameters, which are the same as in X control, except the values for the learning gain and low pass filter, which we set to 0.4 and 3 respectively. The outer loop we just examined outputs UX, UY, and UZ, which are the propeller forces to the car rotor. This MATLAB function takes these control inputs and calculates for the commanded roll, pitch, and yaw that become reference angles to the inner loop. In the inner loop, we have three standalone previously tuned PID controllers for attitude control generating the torques required to achieve the desired orientation. Now that we discussed this cascaded control system and set up the parameters for the ILC controllers, we can simulate it and evaluate performance of the designed ILCs. Note that we have the subsystem which models a wind disturbance along the Y direction. But initially, we will test the controller without any disturbance. Next, we will simulate the model and review the results. As the simulation starts, we see a 3D animation of the quadcopter generated by the UAV animation block. 
The red circle represents the reference trajectory we want the quad rotor to follow. Initially, the quad rotor significantly deviates from the reference trajectory. In addition to the animation, we can observe the locked signals in the simulation data inspector. The left-hand side plots show the signals associated with the position control in the X direction, and the ones towards right show same signals for Y position control. Let's focus on X position control first. The top plot displays the reference trajectory in red and measured X position in blue. The second plot shows the control effort by the ILC in green and the ILC mode in yellow which switches between 0 and 1. 0 represents the reset mode where ILC is idle and the quadcopter returns to the home position. The last plot illustrates the control effort by the baseline PID controller. The switch in the ILC mode from 0 to 1 indicates the start of each new cycle, which lasts 20 seconds. It takes the copter 15 seconds to complete the reference trajectory and during the remaining 5 seconds it returns to the home position. At the end of the simulation we can compare first and last runs, which clearly shows the improved tracking performance in the last run. Let's view the log signals for the whole simulation. In the first iteration, we see that the iterative learning controller outputs 0 because it just starts learning. During this time, control is handled solely by the PID controller. Considering the PID controller is well-tuned for this task, this initial iteration serves as a baseline for comparing the performance of ILC with the nominal PID controller. From the first plot, we observe that as iterations progress, the ILC learns to compensate for the position tracking error, resulting in improved reference tracking performance. It takes the system around 9 iterations to converge. Over this period, as ILC adapts iteratively, it provides more feed-forward control, while the contribution of the baseline PID controller to the combined control reduces to a minimum. Comparison of the system response between the first and last iterations reveals that ILC significantly improves tracking performance in the X direction, compared to using the PID controller alone. We observe similar results for the position control in the Y direction, which shows improved tracking performance and the growing contribution of the ILC control effort to the combined control as the system converges. Now that we have tested controller performance, we will next simulate the system in the presence of wind disturbance. For this, we will consider a scenario where the quadcopter tracks a circular trajectory in an indoor setting, with a fan blowing along the Y direction, affecting half of the reference pad of the quad rotor. We run the simulation for such a scenario with disturbance on and view the results. On the left, we see the plots for the X and Y positions, as well as the wind disturbance. On the right, we see the quad rotor trajectories in the XY plane, along with the wind disturbance vector field acting on the system during half of each cycle. Results indicate that the designed controllers still provide satisfactory trajectory tracking, even in the presence of periodic disturbances. However, if the disturbance is not repetitive in nature, ILC might not deliver optimal performance. Lastly, you can automatically generate code from your Simulink model for deployment. It's important to note that the generation of new control input sequence at each iteration is a lightweight computation, making ILC suitable for running on resource-constrained microcontrollers. To generate code, you can right-click on the ILC block, select C, C++ code, and build the subsystem. Once the code is generated, you can view it in the code generation report. In summary, we learned how to design an iterative learning controller for trajectory tracking of a quadcopter. ILC is well suited for systems that perform repetitive tasks, starting from the same initial condition each time. To explore the example we use today and more, find the links below this video.